Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Let's Get Technical series where I, Kavita Agrawal, the founder of the XP Invest, will teach you something new related to the world of technical analysis and swing trading through chart. Today's topic is how to select stocks for swing trading chart version. If you're not aware, one week ago last week on Wednesday, we did a session on how to select stocks for swing trading logic version. That was the part one. In that, I talked about the importance of having a stock selection process and what are the things that you need to do from having a watch list to having a screener. I even shared my own screener, which I use on charting its uh, settings. I showed that also a blog with all of the information that was covered in the live webinar has also been posted on my website for those who prefer to read and I'll be more than happy to drop the link of that blog in the comments for you right now. So go check it out and also sign up for the newsletter on my website if you're interested in weekly blogs. So it's very important to make sure that you watch the first video and then this session because otherwise this session may not make a lot of sense to you. So what is it that we're going to discuss today? Today I want to show you how I manage my system of Selecting stocks for swing trading. Now, before I get into doing that, I want to talk to you about the psychology related to swing trading. And the reason I want to touch upon is that today in my Trade Together program, which is, by the way, a swing trading recommendation service, the members have expressed some emotions and I have been helping them iron out. Since my members are experiencing anxiety and these emotions, these psychological biases are starting to kick in, I'm sure it's probably also happening for the larger crowd. So let's talk about it. Today, the market has been unexpected in the sense that today Nifty was in a correctionary mode. What do I mean by that? For the last few days, 22,250 has been acting as the resistance. Today, we saw a bit of a correction and the support level of 22,000 was breached on Nifty. However, the 500 EMA on the 15 minute time frame continues to lend support to the broader market. But there are certain shifts happening. For example, on the daily time frame, there's been a large RSI negative divergence happening. Why am I telling you this? Because the market is close to a very important resistance, which is 22,500. There is a lot of volatility happening in the market. So ever since the market sustained above the level of 22,000 for the first time on 16th of February, let me also share my screen for this discussion. So ever since we crossed above the level of 22,000 here, what has happened is if you look at the prices, we've gone up. So once we went up around 200 points in a matter of five days, then we came down sharply, 340 points decline in a matter of just one or two days trading. Then we again went up around 400 points in a matter of just one, two days, one day of trading. And today again, after some consolidation or choppiness, we've again declined by 300, 400 points in a matter of five, six days. So when you're doing swing trading, the kind of market that you actually want to profit, that is very profitable for you to trade in is a trending market. But when the market is very choppy, going sideways, sometimes up, sometimes down or not having any trend, it is expected to get frustrating. Now, when you know that it will get frustrating, when, what do I mean by get frustrating? Basically, that your stop losses are going to get triggered. So there are two risks in doing swing trading. Number one, that you lose capital because you didn't do your risk management properly. Number two, you are not invested in the market and so you miss out on the opportunity when a trend begins. So if you see the market before this uptrend, so this uptrend was a very good time to make money and we did. But what did it, what preceded this kind of good uptrend? If you see again, it was a choppy market. So choppy markets are part of the market. So if you want to make money during the uptrend, you also will have to deal with choppiness in the market and downward trend in the market. The solution to recurring stop loss triggers is not to either not buy stocks or not use stop losses. Because if you don't use stop losses, you are going to experience drawdown on the portfolio as a result of which the next time the rally comes, you, you're not going to have cash available to actually buy stocks with opportunities. When the market is very choppy, what will happen is some stocks will tend to look very attractive. These are called fake signals. And again, it's a part of the market. There's nothing wrong with fake signals. We have to learn how to manage it. So there are going to be fake signals in the market. You will take your position. It's going to trigger your stop loss. What you need to do is suck it up. Let the stop loss get triggered. Let your cash get free. Sure, you took a 1 or 2% hit there. Even if you took up to a 5% hit, it's fine. It's better than staying in the stock and incurring opportunity cost. What's going to happen is next time a good solid signal comes, you learn first of all from your first mistake. You go back and do past trade analysis after some time has passed so that try to identify if there was something that could have signaled you that this was potentially going to be a fake signal. Was there any red flag that you might have overlooked in a little bit of impatience? Be on the lookout for these red flags. So when you see the opportunity again in the market, 
because we have cash available, you'll be able to enter this new opportunity or re-enter the previous stock that you might have been stopped out at a more favorable price now. Now, if the bull trend starts in the market, if a nice strong rally starts in the market, you are invested in the market to take advantage of it. This is the mindset that you need to go in with. Right now, what we are looking at the market is 21,850 is now the next very important support for the market. If this gets breached, my expectation is that a lot of stop losses are going to get triggered across my portfolio, freeing up a lot of cash. What I will do then is when the 15 minute time frame or the 75 minute time frame of Nifty gives me a bullish look or my system of stock selection gives me a stock which is looking very bullish on the decision making time frame as per its personality, then I'm going to go in and take a position on it. So what did I just mention? What is this decision making time frame and what is this stock personality? Let me show you. So what I will do is I will now take you to my tracking sheet where I like to maintain records and this is a work in progress. So in today's session of how to select stocks with charts, I'm going to talk about a very important uh, distinction between different stocks which can help you do better executions, which can help you improve your executions with respect to stocks significantly. While I pull out my charts and while I set things up to show it to you or rather uh, before the charts, we are actually going to look at my tracking sheet. Tracking sheet, by the way, this tracking sheet is something that everybody has made a lot of requests to me to share time and again. Let's just keep what is relevant for our discussion and make those columns bigger. And let's hope we zoom this in a little bit. This is now perfect to bring to my screen and show you guys. So when I say decision making time frame and stock personality, what am I talking about? If you see here, there are these stock names on my screen and beside them, there is the stock name and there is the decision making time frame or the decision time frame. And then there is something called SPMM. Somewhere you will see super trender written, somewhere you will see SM written. What do these mean? So once you've gone over the discussion of last week where I've gone through the logic of stock selection, this is what you need to do next. So let's take the first example that is there, Abbott India. So if you've been watching my sessions for a while, you know that Abbott India is actually one of my favorite stocks for doing swing trading in. And sim the, the simple reason for that is, number one, the stock's personality, that is the way the stock moves, and the decision-making time frame. That is the time frame on which its trends is very clearly observable. So what is the decision making time frame? Decision making time frame is simply the time frame on which the stock's movements is very clearly visible. Every stock does not move in the same kind of wavelengths or does not unfold on trends of the same wavelength. If you're aware of the Dow theory, Elliott wave theory, you already know that trends unfold on many different levels. Within stocks, Within industries, within sectors, within indices, you can observe these trends. However, it is not necessary that the trend will be very easily identifiable on all stocks in the same time frame. To give you an example, Nifty, for example, the trends on Nifty are clearly visible on multiple time frames, daily, 15, 3 minute, 75 minutes. I think the primary reason for that is because a lot of people trade in Nifty. So trends, because there are a lot of people trading on many different time frames in an index, especially Nifty, a broad market index, what happens is the collective psychology of a lot of people gets reflected on charts at different levels. However, when it comes to stocks, in one particular stock, say if more long-term investors are interested, then the long-term trends unfold in a more legible manner. In a stock, if there is more intraday trading happening, so there the trends will unfold more clearly on the 15-minute time frame. If a stock has more interest from intraday traders or short-term traders as well as long-term traders, then what I've noticed is that the stock has very clearly unfolding trends on both the 15-minute time frame and the daily time frame. This is the decision-making time frame. In order to determine the decision-making time frame, what you do is you determine you look at the charts, you just eyeball it on different time frames and you see which is the time frame on which the decision, the wave, unfolding wave is very clearly visible. When you make stock selection or when you're making execution decision, first, you need to look at three different time frames. The first is the decision making time frame. The second is one time frame higher than the decision making time frame. Next is the one time frame lower than the decision making time frame. Why are we looking at three different time frames? The first reason is that when you look at the decision making time frame, you want to look at one time frame higher to make sure that the trend is bullish. So remember when you're doing swing trading in the cash segment, you are only buying low and selling high. You're not trading the downtrends. You want to avoid the downtrends. So the best way to ensure that you are betting on the right side of the trend is by making sure that one time frame higher is looking bullish. How do you determine whether you're doing it is looking bullish multiple ways again. I prefer to use mainly momentum analysis and volume analysis. 
I will see and ensure that one time frame higher. So in this case of ABIT, it will be the daily time frame. There should have been an RSI positive divergence on the daily time frame and the RSI should be in a bullish range. Now, if you don't know what is RSI positive divergence or what is the RSI bullish range or bullish range shift, I would suggest you go over to my YouTube channel and you look up these terminologies in the search box. I will also drop the link in the comments of my RSI positive range shift or RSI range shift study. There is a video on YouTube which I made. It was also discussed in one of the live sessions just like this in the comment section right now. So the range shift videos link will be dropped to you in uh, the comment section in some time. Coming back to this discussion. If you want to do swing trading in, so suppose you ran the screener that we discussed last week and Abbott India came up in that screener. Now, whether or not you should go ahead and make the position on this Abbott India will first of all depend on whether the underlying trend in one time frame higher than the decision making time frame on Abbott India is bullish or not. Suppose today looking at this chart, I can say it with conviction that if I ran my screener, I would see Abbott India in one of the results. So. The decision to whether consider making a long position on Abbott India at this point of time will depend on the daily time frame. What I want to see on the daily time frame is number one, there is a bullish trend on folding and number two, there is upside left in the stock. How do I know that there is upside, whether there is upside left in the stock or not? Simply, I'm going to do a past trend analysis. So when I do a past trend analysis, I want to ensure that this specific stock has a tendency to reflect or unfold uptrends in three waves. If you're aware of the Elliott wave theory, which by the way is a very useful theory, it's very difficult, but it's very useful. And also the Dow theory, right? They both have something common and they say that when it's unfolding, it unfolds in three waves. And when this uptrend corrects, it unfolds in ABC. Don't mind the angles and the slopes. What is important is one, two, three, and then one, two. Within this also, this will unfold in one, two, three, four, five, and then ABC. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then ABC, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then ABC and you can keep doing that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then ABC. You can keep going lower and lower in terms of time frame. If I study the chart of Abbott, what I can see is that this is exactly where the previous bull trend had started and since that bull trend started, I can notice two clear cut peaks. Now within these clear cut peaks, what I can see is that this probably is the second leg of the uptrend. This is the correctionary phase. So I'm going to go one or two time frame lower and what I can see is that okay so this is the role of one time frame higher to tell you that hey you know what a new rally a new rally has started back in whatever December 23 and then the leg two has unfolded and you know what the leg three still remains so potentially you have an opportunity to participate again in the stock but why do we need the time frame lower? Now we will go to one time frame lower than the decision making time frame to ensure that we get a very precise entry. How do we do that? So I want to enter a stock when it is near the lows. How can I do that? I can look at the 15 minute or the 3 minute time frame. Now if I have made up my mind that I want to buy this stock, I'm going to set an alert on the RSI of the 3 minute time frame and alert at the level of 30. And then on the 15 minute time frame, also I'm going to set an alert at the level of 30 and I'm going to wait it out. In addition to doing this, I want to see where is the most recent, the recent resistance. If I zoom in on the chart and if I look at the most recent resistance, clearly this is where the most recent resistance lies. Why is that? Number one, this is where the 200 EMA was breached. Number two, when the price tried to go up again, it did create a spike there. And if you want, you can also extend this line backward and you will see that this price level was probably respected more number of times. So this is the first resistance and above this, if we clone, this is the second resistance. I don't want to buy the stock or rather I don't want to miss the stock if it goes above the first resistance. So what I'm going to do, I'm also going to analyze this chart to understand what is my 15 minute time frames momentum looking like. In order to do that, I want to look at the RSI. Now what I can see is that RSI is breaking the level of 30 only when this downside has started. When this was going up, if you notice the price level here if I draw this line, if I draw this green zone, you see this price level and this price level is very close to each other. But look at the difference in the RSI level. The RSI in the first time this level was approached by the price was somewhere near the level of 50. Why is this? This is because of the momentum. The price when it tested this level the first time was coming out of a very bullish momentum. Second time when this price got tested, the price is coming out of a bit of a bearish momentum as a result of which the RSI is telling us that I am below the level of 30 when this got, price got tested, which is a signal that potentially a little bit more correction could come, which means it's not too late to buy the stock yet. So ideally, my buying price, my buying range for the stock is 
between this two important EMEs. So this is where the role of EMEs also come into your trade execution. I like to use the 500 EMA and the 200 EMA. If you notice on this specific chart, this gray line that you see is actually the 500 EMA of the 15 minute time frame. But this blue line, so you'll see there are two blue lines of the same color, but different thickness and different transparency. When it is a thicker and a more transparent line of the same color, I know it is the time frame higher. So this blue thick semi-transparent EMA, I know is the 200 EMA of the 75 minute time frame. And this is where I potentially want to create my position. So what am I going to do? I know that there is a potential support at the level of 27,800. And that actually becomes a very attractive position uh, or rather level at which I would like to add my position. So what I'll do is I'm going to set a price alert. I'm going to set a GTT on my purchasing account in order to capture this price if it comes. And I'm going to set multiple GTT. So one would be at the level of 27,800. Another would be at the level of 27,000. Exactly. But why? Because that line coincides exactly with the 200 EMA of the 75 minute time frame. I would not expect the price to go anywhere below this level of 26,630 because that was very strong uptrend. And also if I want to look at a bit more details or breakdown of this particular correction what i would say is that this leg two actually started at this point of time right so in this leg two if i have to study i would say this was like the first wave or maybe this was the first wave then this was probably the third wave really strong this was the fifth wave so now the abc correction of one wavelength lower is unfolding and i would expect this price now to at least retest the previous low and go a little bit below that also it's not a problem so of the Leg 2, what I would say is that the leg 2 is basically over here and we are in the ABC correction of the leg 2. So what I can also do is I can draw a Fibonacci ratio here and what I'd see is, alright, the first correction ended somewhere close to 38.2 and for this one I would expect point at least 50% of that to get corrected. So again, the 50% line coincides exactly with my buying range. Now, because I want to know that this is where the 50% line lies, I am going to replicate that line because for my Fibonacci ratios, I have made the setting. Oh, looks like I've changed the settings. I made the, so I don't like the visibility of my Fibonacci ratios to bleed into other time frames. So that is why this setting has been changed. So now it will not be visible on the 75 minute time frame anymore. So that was the discussion about the decision making time frame. One time frame higher, one time frame lower. Now let's get into the discussion of personalities. What do I mean by momentum movers? What do I mean by super trenders? What do I mean by slow mover? So in my experience of swing trading, of what I have realized over the past 12 years of swing trading in the Indian stock market is that different stocks have different tendencies and different stocks have different personalities. What do I mean by different personalities? So there are some stocks who are momentum movers. There are some stocks who are super trenders. There are some stocks who are slow movers. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's take a blank canvas and let's discuss that. So momentum movers are stocks that will go up, up and down, and they give you very good momentum opportunities. All you need to know is identify the decision making time frame from them. Make sure that one time frame higher is bullish indeed, and then look at one time frame lower to potentially execute your trade with precision. So this is the momentum mover. And then what is the super trender? Super trender is a stock which once it starts trending, it keeps moving in a direction. So the momentum movers, ideally, once the trend starts, they do go up, but they also come down. They go up, they come down, they go up, they come down, they go up, they come down. But super trenders are stocks that keep moving in the direction until there is a trend reversal. Once there is a trend reversal, they will also decline significantly. So one example of a super trender, I say, would be BEL. And one example of a momentum mover would be, of course, Abbott India. So then what are these slow movers? Slow movers are stocks which do go up and do go down, but they take a lot of time to do that. A slow mover would basically give you an uptrend of maybe 7% over 90 days. These are usually the mega large cap stocks. So these are the three main categories. But remember that stocks can also be combination, which means that a stock can be super trender on one time frame. Because remember I told you that the, there are some stocks which respond to multiple time frames in terms of trend legibility. So those stocks can also be combination stocks in terms of their personality which means that they can be super trenders on say a daily or a weekly time frame but maybe on a 15 and a 75 minute time frame they have very discernible very clearly visible trends unfolding one very good example of such combination is bbl 
BBL is one such stock which sees wonderful super uptrends or super trends and at the same time it's also a very good stock for momentum trading. Another combination that is commonly visible in the market is slow mover and momentum trader, momentum mover. So these stocks they move really slowly but they also give good momentum trades. I like to keep these stocks in my watch list despite of their very annoying slow movement is because when the market gets very choppy they are the safe haven where I want to park my money in. Preferably take risk in these stocks. Why? Because if the market is getting very choppy, if the market is getting less than favorable, these stocks can actually put, provide a little bit of cushion to my capital and save it from erosion, which can happen really fast in swing trading if, if you shut your eyes or if you turn away for some time and don't pay attention and you're not religiously updating your stop losses or keeping bracket orders on all your active positions, right? And we have yet to see a super trend who's also a slow mover, but I'm sure that they do exist. So this is how I like to maintain all my notes. This is my tra tracking sheet actually. So this is uh, in all the hidden rows and hidden columns. There is also the cost price. There is the quantity. There is a stop loss, target, risk reward ratio, remarks. Everything is maintained in this. When I am looking at stocks, right, when I'm doing my analysis, when I'm doing my entries post the trades, I am able to see my notes of the decision making time frame of my stock personality so that I know that I'm making the right decision and I'm not getting paid by my biases. Because remember, psychology is such an important variable or parameter when it comes to trading that no matter how much you practice, you'll never be able to control it. You'll always be at a stage where you have to constantly manage it. You cannot eliminate psychology from your trading. It is going to keep kicking in. You have to keep managing it and you constantly have to keep getting better and better at it. And in fact, I'm learning that psychology is such an important part that I really believe there should be like a separate therapy sessions for just traders because the array of emotions that you experience when you're trading and so many people don't even realize that they're actually making repetitive mistakes in the trading journey. Off late, I've started giving these one-on-one -on -one sessions to people who are interested in talking to somebody who's very systematic, who can potentially mentor you on the right path. And what I've learned is even after spending 5-10 years in the market, people tend to make same mistakes. And why is that? The reason is that you're not going back and you're not learning from your mistakes. If you're not learning from your mistakes, you are bound to repeat them. No matter what problem you're trying to solve, the source of the solution is going to come from the problem. So if you want to solve a problem, first come face to face with the problem, dig into it, get into it, look for the root of the problem. The problem is not that you're making losses. The problem is that you are engaging in activities which is lead, leading to losses. So if you feel like you've tried everything but nothing seems to be working for you, then maybe you might be interested in booking these one-on-one -on -one consultations for me. I will drop the link in the comment right now. Also with this, I've come to the end of the knowledge sharing that I wanted to do. If you feel this was too brief and if you want to get into more details of swing trading with me, then I would recommend that you join my advanced technical analysis training program in which I give end-to-end -end swing trading training. I will teach you the systems, the scanners, the setup, the workflow, the psychology, everything related to swing trading so that you can become a better trader. It is a six month long course. Obviously, you're not going to become a successful swing trader right at the end of it, but I will be accessible to you for up to one year once you uh, enroll into the program and I will be there to guide you whenever you need my time. So these are all interactive live training sessions, 24 sessions. Plus, if you want to book one-on-one -on -one sessions, those are also available to you at 50% cost. So, with this, let's now move on to the fun part, which is answering your stock requests. Now, if you have questions which you'd like me to answer for you, then you know the drill. Go to this link dot in slash stock request. I'm going to drop this link in the comment and make sure that you fill in this form if you want queries to be answered. So now we already have people who asked these queries. So let's go ahead and answer their questions. So Anshu asked us about IRCON. So let's take a look at IRCON. He says his average cost is 222 and he wants the target price. So this is a stock of R2. Let's identify the level. That's 222, your entry price. Let's take a quick look at the market cap. Above 200. So not a very big stock. This is just about 200 billion, which... So it is actually a pretty massive company. And Iacon International, I believe, is our railway, right? Let's just confirm. Indian Railway Construction International Limited. Yes, okay. So this is the railway stock. The rally unfolding is clearly really strong. And if I have to tell you about what is the decision making time frame, I would say the 75 minute time frame actually acts as a pretty good. So this is again a combination stock. So what I like to do is I like to note my decision time frame here, right at the top right corner. And I started doing this quite recently. The reason being that earlier I was maintaining all of this only in my trade tracker. And as a result of that, what was happening is I was having to constantly switch my eyes or move my eyes between the tracker, search for the stock, and then come back to the chart. So that kind of breaks the line of thought. Now, what I've started doing is I maintain the 
notes on both my charts and my trade tracker so that my line of thought does not get breached. So decision making time frame first is a 75 minute time frame on which it looks like a momentum mover because we are seeing wonderful momentum. And secondly, we can only look at the weekly. So it is only so far only the 75 minute time frame seems to be giving a very legible reading of the trends unfolding. And what do I mean by that? It's simply that every time the stock comes down to the level of 30 on the 75 minute time frame, it is giving us something to do. Whenever the daily time frame is in a very clearly in a bullish trend, the retest of the 30 level becomes really attractive. So what I see is also on the daily time frame, what is very evident is that it is clear that a new rally began on the stock. And then this was the leg one, that was the leg two, and then this is the leg three. Now the problem is it looks like all three legs have begun. So now if the stock goes into correction, what I would expect, to be honest, would be the correction of this, which means my first support for the stock would be somewhere at 182, which also makes sense because of this entire resistance zone. The second support for the stock would be somewhere around here as per the price activity around 125. And of course, this is again a very important level because it is a 61.8 level. Now. Having said that, let's also look at one time frame, like one wave before. And what I can see is this is where the new rally had begun for this particular stock. Because you know, if you want to objectively understand the price activity of a stock, you have to make sure that you cover at least two, three cycles of previous similar uptrends. So if you're studying this uptrend, you need to make sure you study some previous uptrends also. See, this is the mindset here is very similar to what you use in fundamental analysis. That if you get into the study of a particular sector or a particular stock, you want to look at significant amount of past trade or past annual reports because you want to see, you want to understand the cyclicality of the industry itself. That is what we're trying to understand here also. We want to understand how this unfolds. What is the tendency of this trend to unfold? So this is where another new rally had begun. This is precisely where it began. And then this leg one of this rally and I know I take a lot of time analyzing each stock but I can't help it 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 is a time taking endeavor and then this was the leg three so what we can see is that the leg three here actually was a truncated fifth a concept of Elliott waves which basically means that the fifth wave did not unfold to test the previous high it was truncated and one two three so this was one correction and this was a bit of that and then this strong upside is actually the unfolding of the third wave up to here. So the leg three began here and then this was the fifth wave. And then this is the ABC correction, which makes sense because you know, a lot of, so what we're looking here is potentially that the leg of this, the, the wave fifth is basically covered. I personally would be very cautious of entering a stock at such a time. One, another reason of my caution would be that if you see here, this is the negative range shift temporary as it might be, it causes a bit of concern for me. So this is what I am also observing here that RSI is being shy of going above the level of time. Even on the 15 minute time frame, it looks a little bit weak to me. So what I want to do is on the minute time frame itself, ideally I want the level of 30 to get retested again if I want to make a fresh entry. And for someone who is already holding, Ashu in this case, who's already holding, I would suggest that you maintain your stop loss near the most recent low of the stock which is somewhere here with a little bit of buffer. So your stop loss for IR con would be 189 with a little bit of buffer. Your stop loss would be 189. And you want to set the stop loss because remember if the stock goes into correction, so the first stop support is actually here. So let's move the stop loss to give the stock a chance to bounce up from this 23.6% 23 retracement. Change your stop loss, set it to 172. Now you see the risk reward ratio. Your stop loss on a momentum position here is 22%, which is massive. You keep the stop loss when you're trading in a long term position, not on a short term swing trade. Right now, given the situation, given that you know you're right at break even, I would recommend you to exit the position and re enter at a more favorable timing. I think you probably entered the positions out of maybe FOMO or after the rally. That is the worst time to enter a stock for a short term position after the rally. You always want to buy the dip or you want to buy a stock which is an underlying strong bullish trend but it's coming out of a correction. Let's enter the 231, uh, 223.9 is the pot price, 223.9. And the target is not been mentioned here. I have mentioned the stop loss of 222 itself. So the comment is please exit the position and re-enter when 75 minute retests stay on RSI with setting of 25. Okay. 
I know that's a little bit technical and it's too precise, but that is how I like to work. So if you fill up this form, you will also get similar response and my team will send this response to you on your WhatsApp. The next question is by Suman on GNA. And this GNA axles. So what is Suman's cost price? 471 and sell or hold target please. So, so the stock is already experiencing losses and it does not look very good to me. The reason being that this again, this is a after the rally purchase. Guys, you need to really stop buying stock after the rally. Stop chasing the rally. Start buying stocks before the rally. If you're not very proficient in technical analysis, join my trade together program and I will give you stock recommendations with strong risk management strategies. So that even if, if a choppy market comes, even if a lot of stop losses get triggered, at least the capital is going to stay preserved because you're going to be able to trade in a professional manner rather than letting your emotions have the sway on you and eating into your capital. The best part is this survivability is going to help you make money when the trend turns bullish indeed, which is inevitable in the market. What I'm seeing here is the 200 EMA on the daily time frame is clearly giving away. This is the beginning of a correction on GNA repeatedly. So I would again suggest you to exit this stock because the first support that I'm seeing on GNA axles is 8% lower and the second is actually 364 which is also the I think the 52 week low I am not wrong yes so this is indeed the low price the yearly low and I expect this yearly low to get breached very soon on the specific stock because some correction is expected however if you are okay holding the stock for long term then you can definitely do that. However, even in that case, I would recommend you to observe a stop loss. Actually, this 52 year low should not get breached because I see 395 or 400 is actually a very good support. However, I think this stock has a better chance of going up if it sustains above the level of around 446. As you can see here, this is a bit of an indecisive range and the stock needs to move out of this range in either direction. So even for your short term position, I would suggest that you maintain the stop loss at 3.495 if you insist on holding it absolutely, right? So that would be your stop loss. The price is 426 and the stop loss that I have recommended is 395 if the stock can be held for long term which is i think what the stock is most suitable for it's not a very good momentum mover it does give momentums but the the movements are not very evident on the 75 minute time frame at least maybe clearer on the daily time frame so i would say the decision making time frame is the daily time frame if you look at the weekly time frame it does look bullish but not very much so i think the volume is a little bit of an issue here most likely Makes sense. The It's like an 1800 crore company, not a very big company. So yes, liquidity is a bit of an issue. Volumes is a bit of an issue here. So your stop loss would be, like I said, around 395. And on the upside, if you can hold the stock for a long term, then you might also be able to see a breach above the lifetime high at the level of. So this is not a very good stock for the short term. I would suggest it's a stock not suitable for short term holding please hold for long term that is more than one year and your target would be around 580 plus so i'm going to conservatively mention 582 so with that we've come to an end of this session i hope i was able to add some value to you or teach you something new if yes then do give a thumbs up to this live stream before you leave and leave a kind comment that would make up my day before going i would also take, like to take a look at the live comments and see if i might have missed something let's take a look at the comments yeah. here so ma'am can you please explain one more example rudra what example are you exactly asking for i believe maybe of the decision making time frame so let's take a quick look at vbl and let me share my screen let's take a quick look at vbl and explain why this is like my favorite stock for swing trading if i can draw these vertical lines on 75 minute time frame every time the level of 30 got touched you will see right off the bat once the level of 30 was touched because the underlying trend is so strong, so bullish, a nice little rally unfolded. So now let's take a measurement of the rallies that we've just made. And you will see this is a 23 rally in just two weeks. Here, there was a 14% rally in just 27 days, which, by the way, unfolded into a much stronger rally until the next signal came on the 75 minute time frame. So that is also the reason why once a rally is unfolding, I also like to look at the 15 minute time frame and set alerts on the level of 30 so that I don't miss entering rallies if I have made a premature exit because remember in swing trading that can always happen here so this one again if you see this was a 29% rally in just 30 days this is around 43% rally in 58 days this is 8% in 13 days but then I believe the daily time frame was probably in correction 
and here again we've got a signal and what do we see here let's unscrunch this chart a little bit the first leg of rally was 10 percent in 17 days which unfolded into 22 percent and then 23 percent in just 71 days and this total rally unfolded into 27 percent in just about 99 days again we got a signal and this signal actually unfolded into a much much stronger rally of 56 percent in 57 days so if you just noticed you will see there are times when the signal is fake when the signal is better so this is the reason why i said that when you identify the decision making time frame you need to look at one time frame higher to ensure that it's showing bullishness if it's not showing bullishness then it's in your best interest to let the signal go unreacted to and once you know that the higher time frame is bullish and you've gotten the signal on the decision making time frame and the lower time frame looks right for an entry then you make the entry using these and see since I started trading, these insights didn't rain down on me. These insights have taken more than 10 years to develop through a very painstaking process of past trade analysis, documentation, revisiting, lots of trial and error, lots of fight. Now I've been able to condense all this information into these terminologies, into forms of knowledge which I can convey to you in a more clear manner. And now I am teaching this formally in my advanced technical analysis training program. So if you are interested in learning technical analysis from me, there are two things you can do. Number one, if you don't want to spend money, go on my YouTube channel. There is a lot of knowledge there, but it's really broken. It's unorganized. It's a bit of a treasure hunt, but it's there, I promise. But if you want to learn all of these things, all of these things from me in a more system organized manner and want to have the opportunity of interacting with me one on one, because after each class, I also take care of doing a 30 minute question and answer session. If you appreciate the hands-on experience, then the technical analysis training program is for you. You can join my Telegram channel and after this session, I will share the link of my Telegram of my advanced technical analysis training program in my Telegram channel. So in order to join my Telegram channel, you simply have to search trade with Kavita and the first channel that comes on your, on your feed, join that. Now remember, there are some fake channels running with my name. Make sure you're not joining these fake channels because these fraudsters are going to sell you crypto calls, options calls, promise you salary, margin, I don't know what not. I don't do any of that stuff. There are around 4,677 followers or subscribers on my Telegram channel. This is the one that you want to join. Make sure that the channel you join is Trade with Kavita. No number, no underscore, nothing. Just Trade with Kavita. Now, let's take a quick look at some other comments. Dev Kumar Ji, if you need mentoring, like I said, my advanced technical analysis training program is for you. Ankit, I cannot share the stock screening sheet. It's my personal trade tracker. Also, if you take things which I have developed with my experience and try to plug and play, it doesn't work like that. It's better that you join the advanced technical analysis training program and learn how to rebuild that from scratch. When you rebuild that, get your own hands dirty into drawing those columns, putting the header names, making those formula, you will learn a lot more. Not just learn a lot more, you'll be able to build on that system. And who knows, in a matter of two, three years, we might end up with a better swing trading system than mine. So I'm not going to do the bits service of sharing what I have built with you because I don't want to stunt your learning journey. So with that, we've come to the end of a very energetic session. I'm very happy to be sharing all this knowledge and I feel really fulfilled having been able to translate a lot of things that go on in my mind into something that was hopefully a little bit easy for you to understand. Now, if you want to connect with me, do join my Telegram channel. I will see you again on Friday in my Market Outlook series. I will bring to you analysis of Nifty, Bank Nifty and the intersector charts because we want to know where the momentum is going so that we can put our cash there. So I will see you on Friday. Thank you so much for giving me your time and attention. Namaste.